thought about white blood cells? White blood cells are something we all have. They are something that, that is kind of a fascinating part of our body. They're only 1% of our blood supply. But they are extraordinarily important in keeping us safe. They aggressively wander through the blood system, attacking invasive problems that enter our body and that would maybe otherwise destroy us. We don't even have to think about what they're doing, and they're doing it for us. Quite a remarkable thing that God has, has given us. Well, white blood cells have a lot to do with, I think, how we see Jesus work in our life. They both work and give us comfort and protect us as we go through life living and laughing and, and knowing that we're being taken care of. Both are at work all the time, keeping us safe. And we don't even really have to pay attention to it. So when it comes to who is Jesus in our life, sometimes it's a little easy for us to take, maybe take him for granted. Become a little too familiar with him. To, to joke about him, to, to speak in casual language about him. I remember a conversation I had with a woman a few years back. She was, uh, it was, I was at seminary. She was a friend of a seminarian I I met, and she starts talking about uh, JC and me, and, and, and JC is my best friend, and I love to talk to JC, and I love hanging out with JC, and I realized she was talking about Jesus Christ. And, and, and I thought, well, that's really wonderful. You have such a comfortable, casual understanding of, of who he is. But at the same time, it was, it was a little, it just kind of took me aback. It was a little odd to be talking about the God of the universe as me and JC, we're buds, you know? In the same vein, I think it's, it's easy to begin to take God for granted and to realize that this man, Jesus Christ, who we know as a man, is also the one who spoke and the planets and stars came into existence. The very beginning and the end of all things. We've oftentimes made God this nice uncle, this, this dear old Santa Claus-ish man, this teddy bear we can be comfortable with. And we forget that about his real nature. Because just like white blood cells can be helpful, they can be dangerous too. You know, autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis and arthritis, I think diabetes are all, are all caused by these white blood cells that instead of turning out, turn in and begin to destroy the body. The body begins to be taken apart by the very things that are in it to protect it. And we think about Jesus, we like thinking about a nice Jesus, but we need to remember that Jesus is God. And God is powerful. He's powerful enough to appear as a burning peak. We read today, the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain. This God of the universe is powerful enough to bring saints who lived 800 years ago, Elijah and Moses, into time today to meet with Jesus. This God who is so powerful is big and powerful enough to kill the very bodies of the people he inhabits. Now, but you know those people who say, well, I like the God of love. I don't like to think of God that way. My God wouldn't do those types of things. 
Well, I would say that your God is a God who's at the end of a little leash, like a puppy dog. And the puppy dog God is not the God that we see in the Bible. The God we see in the Bible is not safe. He is dangerous. He is not a puppy dog. In the book of Acts, we see Annas, Annas and Sapphira, uh, uh, Sapphira, members of early Christian church in Jerusalem, distinctly lie to the Holy Spirit about money. And what does God do? He kills them. We see in 2 Samuel a simple guy, an Israelite, who's guarding the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark begins to fall in the mud, and he runs up and he puts his hand on it to keep it from falling down, and God takes his life right there. God was just doing what he thought he was supposed to do, but God said, don't touch it. In the book of Numbers, the people wandering the desert begin to complain. They're tired. It's hot. It's, it's food. And, they, and God sends wicked serpents to bite them, and thousands die. And the angel of death comes over the people of Egypt because Pharaoh, not the people of Egypt, but Pharaoh won't let the people go. God takes the Ammon, kills the Ammon, Ammonites and, against the Israelites. God takes the residents of Gosodom and Gomorrah, etc., etc. God does not tolerate evil. He can be a hazard to our lives. He allows death. He sometimes causes it because he is holy. He is set aside from that evil. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I find that a bit scary. It's tempting to want to shield ourselves from this, this frightening power and keep him away by, by doing the right things, by being good, by, by, by sacrificing to this deity we have with, with our offerings and, 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 and our promises of the future. But you know, doing all that doesn't take away any of our sin. It is futile. It is like sweeping sand on the beach into the water. It's like shoveling smoke to get rid of the fire. It doesn't work. The God, the great cleanser of sin and destroyer of evil, will get rid of that sin. But that great God, destroyer of evil, doesn't just destroy. He also loves. And in that love, He has chosen us. He's chosen us to love. He's chosen us to make His face shine upon Him. And he chooses us to be with. And today when we read that Old Testament passage, we saw people coming into the presence of God and he didn't destroy them. Remember that? Then Moses and Aaron and 70 of the elders of Israel went up and they saw the God of Israel. They beheld God and they ate and they drank. So how does this God who who has such a hard line on sin. How do, how do the people of Israel eat food with this dangerous God? How do they sit with him? Well, as messed up as we are, this God who chooses to destroy sin has made a commitment to always work for our good. No matter how bad we are, no matter how messed up we are, this God with this, this commitment to destroying sin has made a commitment that's bigger 
to always working for our good. And he does that by placing a powerful barrier between us. He places a sacrifice between us. Now, we didn't read this part of the Exodus story, but I just want to go back to right before what we read today. And we read in, in Exodus, this is the story of Moses and Mount Sinai. The Lord said to Moses, come up to the mountain. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord, and he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half the blood and he put it in basins, and half the blood he threw against the altar. And then Moses took the blood and he threw it on the people. And he said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with us. It's kind of a disturbing image, You're covered in blood. But he sprinkled them with blood. And we have to understand that blood was understood to be the life force of the body. To have blood on you was to connect you with life. To be sprinkled with blood offered to God was to connect you with the life of God. So to protect them from the wrath of God, Moses sprinkled blood on them. He provided them with the blood of the, a lamb. And today we continue to be people who are sprinkled with the blood of the lamb. We are sprinkled with the blood of the lamb of God. We are people sprinkled in baptism. We are people Protected from destruction because there is a shield between us. The blood of the life force of the Lamb. The blood of God Himself protects us. And because we are not destroyed by God for our sinfulness, we are alive and welcomed by Him. Because of this shield that keeps us from being automatically annihilated, he keeps us alive and brings us into his presence, making us members of his family. This God who is powerful enough to smoke the world and just start over, doesn't. This God who is powerful enough to remove every bit of sin in a heartbeat, doesn't. This God who is dangerous and to be feared rather chooses to always be working for the people he loves and sacrifices himself so they can live with him. We are not destroyed, but we're made members of his family. The human body is full of amazing defense mechanisms, white cells, pain sensors, chemical reactions that tell us something's going wrong. But how many people die anyway every year because the brokenness of the world around us seeps in? It's just how we're made. But no matter, no matter the brokenness, that courses through our body, no matter what comes at us, we are people protected by more than simple cells. We are protected by God himself. We are protected by one who covers us in his life force. He covers us and then he makes us his own. And nothing Nothing will ever get by that protection. You are covered. You are brought into his family. You are safe with him. May the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.